applause to our next guest, Randall Thomas. Thank you, Randall. Appreciate it. You said that you should always do sober what you said you would do drunk. Uh, I can't basically uh, claim that one as my own axiom, but um, it does lead to some interesting interesting adventures. But um, you believe in it? Have you followed through with drunken promises before? Uh, for the ones that's where, that, that's where we got to sign for, by the way. Uh, yeah, for <laughs> anything where the statute of limitations hasn't passed or that wouldn't get me arrested, you know, oh, for the most okay. part. Um, <laughs> no, it, it's actually it's because I think a lot of times when we get drunk, uh, I don't know, you kind of, my, my grandmother always used to say when you get drunk, you become more of yourself. So like, you know, some people are mean drunk, some people are so funny your drunks. grandma told you? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, man. I'm making sure, yeah. Okay. My grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's just, yeah, it's different than my grandma, so I just said to absorb it for a minute. My grandmother was a famous drunkard. Oh, okay. Uh, I didn't realize it until like you were much older, but you know, it's kind of like when you're a kid, it's like grandma always seems so happy when she has that bottle. Right. Oh. Um, <laughs> Uh, and uh, no, it was um, it was just one of those things. It's like she, you know, you do sober what you said you'd do drunk, and one of two things will happen: either you'll stop drinking, or <laughs> more likely, your friends will post some really fucked up shit about you on YouTube. Wow, <laughs> that is not where I thought this interview would be in three minutes. Anyway. Yeah, the special thing is like not only. <laughs> I'm supposed to be here because like, I run a company in supplied statistics, right? I'm supposed to be talking about, this is how you build tech companies or something. All right, well, it's good. Keep it off Facebook. OK, so, um, well, so let's talk about some of the, you, know, you have a huge list of accomplishments. You just got done speaking at the uh, uh, Tech Week that just happened um, last night. And you talked a lot about failure, I guess. So I wanted to continue that conversation a little bit. Yeah. Um, running a failing business, you say, is a lot easier than a successful one. Yeah. You could elaborate I, I, on that. I'd love to hear. Uh, I've had my more than my fair share of failing businesses, that's for sure. Um, funny part is they, they don't feel like they're failing businesses until right. like, you realize you've got to like pay off the credit cards or um, <laughs> You know, somebody comes to take your car, or you know, your dog, and you're dodging your friends because you know you owe them beer money, stuff like that. Right. Um, or whiskey. And no, but it, it's really. I guess what I meant by that, I, I remember we were having this conversation. Is like when your business is struggling, you always have a reason why something's not going right. And the second like business actually starts going really well, then you have real problems, and you don't have any more excuses. Um, it's a different. It's a different set of problems. There are always problems in any business or building uh, a business from the ground up. But when things start going well, all of those excuses that you used to use to go to the bar instead of doing some work, you know, right, right. Uh, they kind of go by the wayside because you're the only person who's actually going to like get that shit done. You're part of a business. You don't have a choice. Right. Um, and if it's kind of going sideways, you're not like, well, you know. Things weren't going that great anyway. So right, at least when you're buried, you can see what to do next. I can, yeah. I, I can see it. And it's yeah, scary like, think that about I can it. See it but yeah. If my business is failing, I can like walk up to you and be like, "Hey, man, buy me a beer. This yeah. sucks." <laughs> right. And uh, you're, you're and treating. anything might be the fix, right? Exactly. So it's like less responsibility on you. So, well, walk me through a time. Do you remember in your history when you were struggling and struggling, and then you started kind of dealing with the extra pain, I guess, of the success? Uh, oof, I wouldn't even. You know what? I don't know that you even. I'd say that we're successful. We can afford our whiskey habit and our beer money for the company, oh, that, which does pretty well. For your um, grandma, that would be. Yeah, you know what? Rest her soul. I'm sure grandma's <laughs> looking down, saying, "Pour me oh, some," right? Um, no, it's it's Sorry. it's just different. It's like um, I suppose. When, when I think about it, you never really think about it as being successful. I think about it as nobody's knocking on the door trying to like turn off your power or repossess your MacBook Pro. Right. Right. Um, and that's the, the level of success that when we can actually start making decisions more out of what you think you should do as opposed to what you have to do, that's kind of, I guess that's either good enough or that's actually the first stage. Gotcha. Um, but, yeah, I remember all the times. I remember when this used to be fancy beer. PBR? <laughs> Hell yeah. It's like if you're getting real fancy, you put like a sidecar of Jameson, and you know, oh, come on. Like you guys, oh, fucking hipsters in the crowd. <laughs> oh, bullshit. Oh, I get it. Now it's all fancy. Like you want some Jamie and ginger ale in your shit. No, oh, don't fuck with me on that. We all know those times where like, I remember there were times we used to drink this stuff called red, white, and blue. It came in an oil can. Yeah, OK. Somebody's like, yes. You couldn't actually open it. The, the, the beer was so cheap, it didn't have a pull tab. Oh, they just, you had just to, to have, save on cost, they just left the knob. Yeah, you, you had to get a can opener, like an old school <laughs> triangular can opener. And, and a drink screwdriver it. in the side, maybe? Or? Yeah, if you're, you're going to get all fancy on it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but I remember when like thinking about the decisions were really like, OK, 
pay your mobile phone bill or get like a 16 or an 18. And it came in weird. I think it came in 18 packs of like steel cans. And okay. so yeah, there's like, it's different. So, so during the pre-interview, you introduced me to the concept of confabulation. Well, tell me about, uh, tell me about looking back on the hard memories and how they, how they seem now. Like, um, you do, know do they seem kind of like they have fuzziness around them and no, music No, no, I, I wake up every morning driven by a fear of deep failure like that. You know, okay. today is the day that the company could fall apart. Because there might be a lot of entrepreneurs in that stage. Right oh, now. actually, so I wanted to be sure here. <laughs> no, everything will be fine. Don't worry about it. You'll, you'll raise the first round and then the second round and then you'll like IPO and everything will be great. And success will be nothing but fun. Exactly. Right, yeah, nothing stressful about being a winner at all. I mean, I mean, Facebook, all of you, next one. Facebook for pugs. Somebody out there, you're going to do it, right? <laughs> um, no, no I, think, I think if you really want to run a business, you can never think that you've made it or that you're successful enough. Or, and I don't mean in the sense of accumulation. I just mean you always have to be thinking about the next thing that you should be afraid of. Um, and then do it anyway. Because frankly, it's right. paralyzing to the point of like maddening. I'm surprised actually most people, I don't understand why anybody would want to start a company without a lot of, like you need a shit ton of Xanax or something. <laughs> right? Yeah, well, well so, so you think there's a discrepancy in how the average person sees running a business and actually what the reality of it is? Oh, I know there is because that's, it's, oh, come on. That's like keeping up with the Kardashians. Yeah, yeah. Shit, right? I mean, it was a softball, but yeah, you down you, with it, Yeah, you know? there's a discrepancy, right? <laughs> because we like to lie to people about what running a business is about, right? So like, okay, so canonical example is like, I don't know why people think I know anything about running tech businesses. I think it's maybe because they're the only, like, I'm the only, like, well-spoken Negro they can find that oh. actually runs a tech business. You have a huge history in Ruby, too. Yeah, I You're know. You're a great but, programmer, yeah, but. Well, but it's, but it's, it's funny, right? Because if I were to tell people, like, somebody asked me today earlier, like, what do you do on a daily basis? And like, I'm like, well, I'm kind of like the world's biggest janitor. Like, I make sure that everybody else in the company can be successful. I get business licenses, I pay taxes, I like, and yes, I pay taxes, all of them, certified by my accountant, right? Yeah, it makes some noise if you pay your taxes. <laughs> Actually, you know what, fuck you people. I just found out no state income tax in Vegas. It's like, I'm in California where basically they have a person who stands behind me every, like, every three weeks and going, yeah, yeah, how's that feel? Yeah, it's like, it's like, I need those TPS reports. It's, right. it's really bad. Um, but, but all the cool stuff that people say is like, you get to fly everywhere. Like, you know, for every time I've flown to Tokyo, I spent way more time in some horrible, god awful part of, no offense, <laughs> North Texas, random parts of Ohio or Oklahoma. And the people are great, but man, you do not want to be flying to Nebraska in November or December, yeah, right? Stuck. Yeah. Or I've missed some, like I remember for, like just recently, uh, a friend of mine got married in Ireland, or like in Ireland, right? At this beautiful castle oh, called yeah. Lismore Castle, right? They rented out a whole castle. I was in San Francisco taking a business meeting. Yeah, dumbass me. Because, right, you know, nice. it's, it's my company. I got to do it, right? Uh, nobody else is going to do it. So. Yeah, I do, I do remember when I was like, well, people want to be entrepreneurs because they don't have a boss. And you just ripped me apart. You were like, that is the <laughs> stupidest thing you could say in a pre-interview. You were like the guard. Everyone is now Was I really boss. that bad? Oh, sorry about that. I exaggerated for, I exaggerated <laughs> for a dramatic effect. Yes, I, I, used, I used confabulation to blow it up. It was I was a, screaming was at you. I was yeah. yelling through the phone. I was. F you always have a boss. If you don't know who your boss is or who you're working for or what you're working for, you're probably on the short bus or something. I don't know. <laughs> okay. So how, how would somebody know if they're thinking about, do there a lot of small-time entrepreneurs here that are starting to get into it or leaving other jobs? How do they know beforehand if they are the right person for it? What would you recommend? I don't know. I suppose if you're the right person to start a company. Right. If you're ready for the entrepreneurial life. Oh, I think if after your friends have told you you're stupid, crazy, um, your girlfriend's ready to leave you, your parents don't believe in what you're doing, and um, your dog actually like pisses on your shoes. <laughs> or just to teach you a lesson as the owner. Exactly. Yeah. For, it's like, for, oh, for wait. trying to be an entrepreneur. Oh, yeah. you're, you're, you're the boss, right? Oh, shh. Well, dog wants his food and water, it's, and you're putting that on the line. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> That's exactly right. You're risking the happiness of your own dog. Okay, so And if you basically yeah. you still want to do it, then I guess you should start a okay. business. All right, so you guys heard it. If your own dog is pissing, pissing on, on your, your shoes, shoes because he's so concerned about your moronic move, then and you still want to do it, then go for it. All right, so you guys can check Randall out uh, online. You can follow him on your Twitter. Your Twitter handle is? I am Daxis, D-A-K-S-I-S, but uh, also we've Thunderbolt Labs is actually okay. nominally the name of the company. That's what we do. We build data platforms for people. So 
you know, if you guys have a, a very hard applied statistics program in either the finance or the pharmacy or the uh, consumer electronics space, we are your people. Um, we're actually, I take that back. We're not applied statistics people. We're data scientists now because Ooh, much cooler. we're sexier now. Yeah. Because <laughs> math people, like, yeah. I will tell you, there was never a chance to get laid as part of like the, <laughs> the math Olympiad. But now that we're data scientists, it's right. okay. I like it. <laughs> you, some of you Here. are in math Olympiad. Do not. <laughs> See, thank you, thank yeah, you. She's, yeah. That's right, Odyssey of the Mind. Uh. She's, she's getting laid, yeah, it's easy, yeah. She's <laughs> good. Okay, but anyways, but you like helping people and startups. Tell us a little bit about that. So um, it's kind of like a pay it forward thing. We got to build our company and we got a lot of help from people. We still have a lot of people who help us on a daily basis and so we think that Frankly, the big part about communities and startup communities, like you're trying to build here in Vegas, is that you have to help each other. Right. And there has to be no, I'm you sure try and do it without idea. necessarily feeling like they need to give something back to you in particular. It comes around. Right. So uh, yeah, we always have an open offer to startups or other companies that like ask us questions. We have us at Thunderbolt Labs goes to the entire company, and we try and answer all of them. So okay. if we can help people, we try and do our best to do that. All right, so you guys can email us at thunderboltlabs.com. And uh, yeah, you're right. The community's got to help you. Someone's got to hold back that dog from peeing on you. And, yeah, you yeah. got to keep the dog it's pissing on your tough, shoes. So. Or how do you clean up after the dog after it does piss on your shoes? You just drink whiskey and forget about it. Uh, no, no, just don't feed oh. it to the dog. OK. Indeed. Just don't feed it. Just don't feed it. No, <laughs> although that could be interesting after a while. Could be a business in that. There could be. Thank you for coming out. <laughs> I appreciate it.